Okay, so by now, we know how to systematically integrate any rational function. And in this video, we will introduce the method of rationalizing substitution, which is an idea of turning, transforming, by a proper substitution, an integral that is not of a rational function into one that is a rational function. And then we can use our method of partial fractions to systematically find this integral. So here's the first example. We want to integrate the square root of x over the cube root of x plus 1 with respect to x. This is clearly not a rational function as we have fractional powers of x. A square root is a power of 1 half, a cube root is a power of 1 third. A rational function is the ratio of polynomials, and polynomials are linear combinations of integer powers of x. So the idea is, how can we, by a proper choice of substitution, transform this function into a rational function? Therefore, how can we eliminate the fractional powers? And you'll see sometimes that a rationalizing substitution is also known as a v substitution. And we'll use a letter v as our new variable to differentiate it from a u substitution. It is a u substitution, but a very special type of u substitution. So the idea is, well, how do we get rid of a square root? The argument must be a perfect square. How do we get rid of a cube root? The argument must be a perfect cube. Well, which number would give us a perfect square and a perfect cubed? This is 2 times 3, 6, as 6 is divisible by 2 and by 3 simultaneously. So our substitution now is that we let x be v to the 6. And we can verify again that this will produce the desired result. So the square root of x will be the root of v to the 6, which is, of course, v cubed. Because if you divide 6 by 2, you get and the cube root of x will be, well, if you divide 6 by 3, you get 2, so it will be v squared. And so you see, with this substitution, the square root returns an integer power of v, and the cube root also returns an integer power of v. So this will become a rational function, which we can then integrate systematically with our method of partial fractions. The only thing we're missing now is our dx. Well, x equals v to the 6, both are equal as functions of x and v, so they have, of course, the same differential. So dx, the differential of x, will be the differential of v to the 6, which is 6 v to the 5 times dv. And now we have all the pieces, so let's replace this is equal to the integral of the square root of x, v cubed, over the cube root of x plus 1, v squared plus 1, times dx, which is 6, v to the 5, dv. So, two things. First, we can factor 6 outside of the integral as a scalar multiple, and here we'll have v cube times v to the 5, so it's v to the 8, over v squared plus 1, with respect to v. So now you see, with this substitution, we are now integrating a rational function of v. Okay, well, first step, 8 is larger than 2, so we must perform long division. Let me do it here. Dividing v to the 8 by v squared plus 1, Be careful here, you negate negative v to the 4, which will give you positive v to the 4. And 
and again here we negate negative 1 so we get positive 1 and now this completes our long division we have a constant remainder so it has degree 0 which is less than 2 so what do we get from this long division well the rational function v to the 8 over v squared plus 1 will equal its quotient so v to the 6 minus v to the 4 plus v squared minus 1 plus the remainder over of course the divisor v squared plus 1 with respect to v and this is not a very straightforward integral leaving c up front as a scalar multiple power rule on the first four terms And here you should recognize that the um, integral of 1 over v squared plus 1 is simply the arctan of v, as the derivative of arctan of v with respect to v is, of course, 1 over v squared plus 1. And in the end, of course, plus c. So we can if we want we can multiply by 6 or we can leave it up front as a scalar multiple let me leave it up front so 6 times the only step now is to go back in terms of x right the original integral was with respect to x well we have to therefore replace v in terms of x and if you think about it well if x is v to the 6 you want to isolate for v as a function of x, take the 6th root on both sides. The 6th root of v to the 6 will cancel, and you'll have v, which will be the 6th root of x, which you can write as, of course, in this form, or, if you prefer, in this form. And I'll go with this form, but either one is perfectly fine. So v is x to the power of 1 over 6. Let's write this here. v is x to the power of 1 over 6. So if you take the 7th power of v, you will have x to the 7 over 6. Over 7. Minus, if you take the 5th power of v, you will have x to the 5 over 6. Plus, here, this will simplify nicely as take the third power of v, you'll have 3 over 6, but 3 over 6 is 1 half, and here it's up to you. You can either leave the 1 half in the exponent, or simply write the root of x. Either way is fine. Minus v, well that's simply x to the 1 over 6, plus the arctangent of v, which is again x to the 1 over 6, we close our parentheses and we're left with, of course, plus c. And this completes our integration. Now if you go back to, again, the original problem, the integral of square root of x over cube root of x plus 1 with respect to x equals this expression, which I think we can all agree on, that it is rather non-trivial. What was nice is that the whole process was actually very straightforward. We make this clever choice of substitution, which gets rid of the fractional powers, which returns a rational function, one long division, the power rule, and a simple observation leads us to the final answer. And this is the, uh, you, should say, you could say the beauty of the method of rationalizing substitution. Because once you can transform an integral, no matter how bad it may look, into a rational function, then you just apply systematically the method of partial fractions. And that's it.